Good morning. It's Lori. Welcome to my crazy life. It's Wednesday. It's 9.07 a.m. I'm off work. Today, I'm making coffee. I'm at Dunkin' Donuts. I'm off work today, tomorrow, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So excited. I'm putting my sweetener in. That's the one downside. Dunkin' Donuts doesn't carry the whole earth sweetener like Starbucks does, but I like Dunkin' Donuts coffee. And I just used my last gift card. Well, I mean, the last of the gift card I was given. Uh, I wish there was a Dunkin' closer to my house, but there's not. I mean, this one's 11 miles away, which isn't, like, terrible, but, you know. And then, um, so I'm going to my brother's house to sit with his mother-in-law. They're on vacation, and the woman who is sitting with them has an appointment so I got them donuts that I can't have but they can it's the pumpkin spice and apple cider apple cider <sighs> delicious so I'm headed over there for the day and then tomorrow is Thursday tomorrow we're cleaning out the garage that is my plan I'm sorry, I've got cords. I'm charging my watch. Um, I always forget to charge this, guys. So, tomorrow is Thursday. My trash day is Friday. So, I think my plan right this second, always subject to change, is to get out and clean out that garage tomorrow and put a bunch of stuff out with the trash Thursday night. And then Friday, I want to organize my pantry and all my baking goods and um, keto foods versus spices versus all the drink mixes and stuff that I have. So I kind of want to go through my pantry and organize that for winter, fall, and yeah, maybe clean up enough to do a tour of my fall stuff. I don't know. And then I have a new project I'm going to be starting. I have ordered the yarn that I need. So I have most of the yarn, but I needed some colors for it. I'm making a sweater. And I needed a, another size of a knitting needle. So I ordered that from Amazon. Hopefully, it'll be here, like, tomorrow. I don't know. All right, let's get going. I've got to be up in Dublin, Ohio in about 20, 30 minutes. Today is the day that this hot mess at least gets a good start and put away how embarrassing my garage is a disaster this is just where everything ends up my kayak needs to come back it goes up there these shelves need organized this is all stuff from when i painted and i just bought firewood that needs to find its way in here cool huh uh, uh, uh. I got a great deal on that. $25. I think that's perfect. All right, let's get to work. Okay, one section complete. There's my firewood for the winter. I feel like I'm prepper, but I am. So what I'm going to do now is I need to go wash my car and vacuum out all this dirt, but that's the wood. Guys, I have a problem. These are all my shopping bags shopping bags from the garage i'm still cleaning it out there what is my problem yeah this is getting pared down immediately ha <laughs> ha wish me luck hi friends good morning it's what is today friday or shall we say friday sorry for the sunlight coming in I just had the plumber here and they replaced my hot water tank. Uh, a necessary evil in life. And I'm gonna try making Starbucks pumpkin cream. I can't have theirs at Starbucks because of the sugar. So I'm gonna try to make my own. If I can get it down, I will make it for you. But for one thing, I brewed my coffee this morning and I have some left. So I'm just going to pour it in the old cup. And I think I need maybe just a little. No, that should be enough. This is a big old cup. 
So I just have some, I put three sweeteners in there and um, vanilla coffee. So it needs vanilla. You can either use vanilla sweetener, vanilla coffee, whatever. And then your cream. Now at the Starbucks, they put like a pumpkin syrup with cream and blah, blah, but I can't have that, like I said. So I took regular half and half. And then I got this creamer from Target, Kalfia. It's a pumpkin spice half. So it's coconut cream and almond milk. So there's no, and it's unsweetened. And I'm gonna froth mine. This is my favorite coffee tool, the frother, but look what it's doing. It's just whipping air into it to make it like a frothy cream, right? Cause that's what you need. And it might need a new battery soon, but I'm gonna let it go for a minute. And then I have pumpkin pie spice to go, to go on top. So we'll see, I'm gonna, this is my first attempt at making the Starbucks cold brew uh, pumpkin cream. Now I can make it with cold brew coffee, but I just made it with, um, Iced coffee left over. All right, let me. Um, this is from Bodum, B O D U M, and it's just the frother. Now, I'm going to put some more ice in here because my coffee wasn't very cold. It was. I like a lot of ice. Okay. There we go. So we have some iced coffee. I'm just reusing a Starbucks cup. Now we're going to take the cream and we're going to pour it on top. Oh, guys. Like what? Look at that foam. And then I'm going to take a little pumpkin spice. If this is good, I'll have a video up from start to finish. Now, I'm going to give it a little swoosh just to kind of get it mixed in. But when you sip it, oh, that is delicious. Your coffee's going through your cream and it still tastes creamy. I'll mix mine up a little bit just because that's how I like it. But oh, that is good. I will definitely have a video up on how I do this and show you all the products that I have. But for now, I gotta head out the door. I got errands to run. I need to go grocery shopping. I got the garage about halfway clean. And I also am doing some laundry finally. I'm washing my sheets. I like to wash them on hot. So I've been saving them until they got my new hot water tank. So now I'm washing the laundry that needs to be done and I need to go to the grocery store. So let's go. Okay, I just got out of my favorite store. Not the Dollar Tree, they didn't have anything in this Dollar Tree, but I'm in the town. It's about 25 miles from my house where my cousins live and there's a store called Azure Farm. It is an almond, almish? It's an almish bulk store. It's a smaller one, but they have everything I need. So I was able to get some sliced pepperoni. Look at the size of that. That's sandwich slice for three dollars and one cent. So a lot, most of what they sell is by the pound. This is the best ham off the bone ever, and it was six dollars on sale. So I got a pound. I like it kind of thick. I roll it up with cheese and have it for dinner. This cheese I'm going to wrap up and put in the freezer. Um, it's just white American. I like this for my queso dip. And this was $4.81, which is a really good deal. And the cheese is all made locally here in Ohio. Or the cheese I buy. I get this little meat and cheese thing for lunch when I come down here. So I'm going to eat that. I don't know how much that was. $3.99, I think. And then... I got my trail bologna, which I think this was yeah, $8.76. Oh, I love trail bologna. I'll keep that for a little while. That'll be like a treat for some night when I'm feeling it. And it's preserved. And then I got some locally grown garlic. 
for $1.25. Most of this stuff is sourced locally, which is what I love about it. And then if you're like, if you have an Amish bulk store, they buy a lot of seasonings and spices and they break it into smaller containers and it's very reasonably priced, like spices, salts, peppers, seasonings. I don't need any spices right now. I would have picked some up because they're good. So this just has a little meat on different cheese ends. Mm. So good. Next stop. Here in town, I'm gonna run into TJ Maxx to see if they have my apron that I want. My cousin got one there, so I hope she didn't get the last one. Maybe I'll do next door. Maybe. I think I only need cream and pork rind, so I should, oh, I need to go, never mind. Ixnay on the Aldi. I need um, ricotta, full fat ricotta. And Aldi doesn't sell the full fat, they only have the low fat. And I need it to make um, some bread. Because I'm out of my rolls without rolls keto bread. Mm, delicious. All right, let's get to the store. All right, we are going to make a little cheater, if you will, uh, broccoli soup. So in here I have some olive oil. I'm going to crush in some garlic, right? Because that's what we need. Except for my hand isn't strong enough. This is some fresh garlic, guys. All right, let's just get that in there. Right? And then I'm going to have to cut this up. This is garlic I bought today. It's just too firm. Or I'm too much of a weakling to go through the garlic press. So, it's okay. I'm chopping it off screen here. There we go. So I have a little olive oil. I'm gonna do a little garlic cooked in there. And then I made some queso today. And I'm gonna use that instead of cheddar. So we're kind of cheating. And then I have some bone broth from Aldi that, I don't know how long it's good after it's been opened. Hi baby. But we'll get it used up this week. So I have that. And then I have the leftovers of what I have left in my broccoli. Now I'm not trying to uh, burn this, but it does need to cook down for a few minutes or it'll be way too potent. And just for the record, that is a lot of broccoli. There we go. A lot of broccoli for, I mean a lot of garlic for this little bit of broccoli soup, but I don't care. I like garlic and it's fresh, right from somebody's local farm. Look at the size of these cloves. Like that is a huge clove of garlic. It's bigger than my thumb, but I love fresh garlic. Here we go. We're gonna let that cook down just for a couple minutes. It really will mellow it out um, for sure. So it won't be as potent, right? So we're gonna let that go for a few minutes. I've got my broth and then some couple tablespoons of queso. I don't have a ton of broccoli over here. Um, just, you know, a couple handfuls that needed to be used or disposed of today. So we're gonna use it. All right, starting to get a little brown on the edges. You do not wanna burn it. It will go from raw to burnt in really no time whatsoever. So you just keep your eye on it. You could also have used butter in here, but I'm good with this. Okay, just a few more minutes. 
And then we're gonna put probably yes, that much cheese in here, but not quite yet. And then probably just a little more than that of the broth. We wanna make it soupy, not like we're eating dip. And that recipe for the queso is one pound of just deli sliced American cheese that I melted and I added cream and a can of Rotel. And I have three more this size and they're in the freezer because there's no way I'll be able to eat all that. All right, I think we're good. We're gonna add a little broth just to stop the garlic from cooking right away. Drop that in there. And bring this up to simmer. And then we'll kind of determine at that point if we need more broth. I may have to freeze these broth, this broth, in like smaller containers. Um, so I don't waste it. Because, you know, this is bone broth. This is good stuff. I could already tell I needed more. And what's good is in the Rotel, there's already tomatoes in here. And then I'm going to throw the broccoli in in a second. And then once it's up to temperature, I'll taste it. And see if I need salt or pepper. And that's it. I just made some broccoli cheese soup. A la keto. All right. I'm just going to let it cook down. Very basic dinner. All right, everybody. We are going to make our butter curry chicken. I make this quite frequently. In here, I have a half a clove of garlic chopped up. The other half is over here for later. I have a dash of cayenne. I have probably a teaspoon of garam masala and coriander and turmeric. I just sprinkle it in there. I don't really, hi buddy, I don't really count. This time I found some Greek yogurt. I don't typically eat this, but the recipe does call for it. Now, if you're doing keto, be careful. This has five grams of carb, Ooh, this has five grams of carbohydrates. I'm not using the whole container. And I'm not also using, um, I'm not uh, using a whole container and it's spread out over several meals, but I think what we'll do is do half and let's see how much liquid that gives us right because we just want to marinate we're going to chop up chicken and marinate it now i'm just mixing it in the bowl oh yummy and what the greek yogurt will do is give it a nice tang which you really want to complement the um you know the amount of butter and cream that's in this recipe because let me tell you it's good but it is definitely high fat the way i make it but that's what i need for my keto all right so i have everything here and everybody's mixed in now we're gonna chop up the chicken i got a new knife sent to me by missing it's a chef's knife we're gonna try it it was like what's beeping Ah, guys, I made the move. I switched over to my coffee pot for winter time. So I'm avoiding my Keurig. I put that away. And I brought out my... Ooh, this cut's nice, guys. I mean, it's a nice cut. Ooh. I'm going to cut these into bite-sized pieces. And then we're going to marinate them in this Greek yogurt and spices most of the day. I mean, I'm not going to say like overnight. You can. Like if you want, especially if you wanted to prepare this the night before or the morning of. And then um, cook it. Because what we're going to do later is I'm going to... Fry up the chicken in a pan with some olive oil. You can use butter, avocado oil, olive oil, ghee would probably work best. I don't have any ghee. I don't know if I want to make ghee. Um, ghee is clarified butter. So you take the milk fats out and that's what typically will burn if you're trying to fry something up in butter. The milk solids is what is going to burn. 
but um, in this situation, I'll probably just use olive oil. There's enough butter in the recipe that I'm not too concerned. And then um, we're going to take out, look how that just slides through. Where it'll take the chicken out when it's almost all done. So it'll go in like little shifts. I'll show you when I do it. But, um, and then we're going to make the sauce. It's a tomato based and butter based sauce. Um, so yeah, it's delicious. I made it with cauliflower a couple weeks ago. Oh, that was good too. But I have chicken and let's just do that. I'm using up some chicken breasts that I have because there's enough fat in this recipe. Typically I eat chicken thighs, which I need to get to Costco. Maybe I should go there this afternoon and get um, a package of chicken thighs from my freezer. Honestly, I'm just kind of nesting. I feel like stocking up, if you will, for winter time. Um, this chicken is cold, by the way. My hands are frozen. Okay. So all the chicken has been marinated. My hands are all chickeny, but that's okay. I'm not going to touch the outside of this container with my left hand. And then air coin plus I'll wipe it down possibly before sticking it in the fridge just to make sure all right so my hand is already dirty I'm just going to use it to uh, massage in this yogurt into this chicken and that's all you just want to make sure the whole container or the whole every piece of chicken has been touched with the marinade and the spices you know the Greek yogurt and the spices and then I'm gonna put the lid on and put it back in the fridge now when I'm ready to cook it I will take it out like a half an hour before I'm ready to fry it up um, oops. yeah I'm definitely wiping off this container but just keep in mind that room temperature chicken or any meat really sears better than and cooks better than frozen or cold just because of the center temperature so there we go. I have that all marinated, all covered in our spice blend. I'm going to wipe this off, put the lid on it, leave it in the fridge all day, and then this evening we'll come back and make this for dinner. Oh, I'm so excited. Delicious. All right, guys. Next up is this pantry. It is a disgrace. Look at this mess. So what we're going to do is pull out everything and purge and clean i'll show you the after and everything is nice and organized up here i have what little bit of canned food i have just a few cans of pumpkin and some others my salt and pepper like i have some diced tomato pumpkin um, back there there's some coconut cream here's my spices i pared that down in here we just have like prepared food some canned meat seaweed i have some spices in here like my whole cinnamon sticks my calm drink mix back there in that black bag is a bunch of samples of avocado oil which i think these would be great for like camping i can use them too i have a bunch of them i got them at a lunch and i went to in the middle is drink mixes over here is all my tea bags a couple drink mixes in here as well but mostly this is all bags of tea that i will have come winter time this will be pared down that tub is all cap food uh, vinegar mustard and cornstarch which i don't eat but i don't know in here is sweetener and when I open up my chocolate chips and stuff. And then down there is empty containers, drink, big containers for drinks, like my water bottles, a couple of bottles of wine, and then empty jars for storage. And then in that little back corner there are my three dash. I have a grill, a griddle, a grill, and a waffle maker. So that's everything. And I pulled out a bunch of stuff that I just don't need anymore. So that was on my list of stuff to do, and I got it done in like 20 minutes. Whoop, whoop. All right, I'm hungry. Let's cook. 
starting to cook the chicken. Here it is out of the fridge. It's been sitting. Mmm, smells so good. Now, you don't want to fry it. Um, oops, sorry. All of it at one time. You definitely want it to have room to actually brown on each side. So you don't want to um, overcrowd your pan. It's, I have a piece stuck. <laughs> there we go. You don't want to overcrowd your pan. You'll end up steaming it instead of frying it. You really want to get a pretty good color onto it. Um, and then put it into a bowl and do your next one until you have all the chicken cooked up. And I'm cooking mine in a little bit of olive oil. And then I'll take all the chicken when it's done and I'll add the garlic I chopped up this morning and some onion. I'm gonna add onion to it this time. Some seasoning and I'm gonna use, because I have a lot of chicken, I'm gonna use two cans of the sauce, two eight ounce cans. So yeah, you just wanna let it all give a good color on it. If I had a cast iron or definitely a pan that wasn't coated, I think you get a better color, but I don't. So this is what we're going to deal with. And it'll be fine. Um, just opening up the cans of tomato. I don't know if I love this stinking can opener I have here. I got it at... Um, from Tupperware it was given to me. It's okay, but it's kind of a pain to open. Yeah. But it's a no cut kind. All right, let's see. I just wanted to show you what it looks like. Yeah, it's got a little color on it. Nothing too dramatic, but enough. We'll let it go a little longer on this side, and then I'll flip every piece over. It's a little time consuming, but it's definitely worth it. I'll come back when all the chicken is cooked. Alrighty, I put some onion in here. Not a lot. Onion has a fair amount of carbs, but I wanted some flavor. And if you hear what's going on behind you, I got rice steaming in the, or cauliflower rice steaming in the microwave. But I want to cook these, and these were frozen when I threw them in here, with a little bit of olive oil. Uh, again, I'm going to add butter here in a little bit, but I didn't need to burn the butter. I'm getting my stick out though, because I'm going to use a lot of butter in this recipe. And I'm okay with that. Plus, this is multiple servings for me. Chopped up the butter. Just want to cook these onions up just a little bit. And then I'm going to add the garlic. I really like this pan. If you have an opportunity to pick one up, it's Tifo and it's a blue diamond. It's uh, ceramic, not Teflon. I really enjoy it. Now you just want to cook up your garlic relatively quickly. Um, I leave it in here too long, it will burn. And what I mean is let it cook in the oil too long. Put some butter in. I'm going to let this melt. And then I'm going to throw the sauce in. And the sauce needs to reduce. But we're also going to put, while that's doing its thing, some seasoning in, spices. In Indian cooking, from what I've seen, a lot of your spices go in the oil and cook first. So it's the turmeric, a little garam masala, which is just like a curry powder. Coriander, which gives a nice like citrusy note to it. I really enjoy the coriander. A little bit of cayenne pepper. So basically, I'm just mirroring the, what I marinated the chicken in. Just adding more. Ooh, that's a lot of cayenne. And then a little salt and pepper. A little salt. And just cracked black pepper. The good thing about all the butter in here, it tames down the cayenne. There we go. OK. 
Okay, so we're just gonna let this spices kind of just cook and marry. It just brightens them up and brings them to life. And then I, I am gonna finish it with fenugreek leaves. I'll get those out here in a second. It's just like a dried herb, it's like a dried basil or something. It brings a really nice flavor. Okay. So everybody is cooked. We have the seasonings cooked in. I put one packet of my sugar in each one of these cans. Just to, you know, deal with the, with the spice and the seasonings and the tomato. This is just tomato sauce. This is not spaghetti sauce. It's just tomato sauce. There's nothing in it but tomato. So, now this has to simmer down for a while. I need it to get thick. So we're going to do that. I'm just going to leave it here and let it really kind of turn it down to a medium low and I'm just going to let it do its thing and I just want to reduce it and as I'm doing that I'll keep adding butter and at the end we'll add fenugreek and cream and then we'll add the chicken back in so I'll be back once that's done its thing it probably will take about 20 minutes all right my tomato sauce with all the spice and the butter is done it's pretty thick. It's a little separated, which that's how I know when it's done, when the oil separates a little bit, but it's okay because I'm going to add some cream to it, stir it up, and then I'm going to put the chicken back in. I mean, I could get the whisk out and go to town, but I think this is fine. Now the cream was cool, so it's gonna stop the boiling for a moment. And then I'm gonna put the chicken back in and it just has to bring it back up to temperature. But this is nice and thick. And there's you know, chicken juices in here. And that's it. That is my chicken buttered curry. My, oh wait, we forgot one ingredient. Ah, hold on. Almost forgot the best part. These are fenugreek leaves. And they're just dried green herb, I would suppose. And then I just crunch them up. And it kind of wakes them up if you run them between your fingers a little bit. I will tell you, they're a little expensive. That container was like $7. So what I need, Bonnie, a little more. What I need to do is find an Indian store local to me so I can, um, you know, get some more stuff when I need it. But I have plenty of these spices, although I do need more turmeric. That's pretty readily accessible. Turmeric is great for you too. It has anti-inflammatory properties to it. And when you're a seasoner or getting to up there in age, like me, then, oops, then it works out, you know, well, if you can, sorry, I got some, I spilled a little bit. There we go. I'll let this come back up to a simmer and warm up that chicken. And then I will serve it over a bowl of rice cauliflower that I already have out. And I'm gonna taste it. Let's see if it needs anything. Mm -mm. That is perfect. And plus when it simmers here a little bit, it'll rehydrate those fenugreek leaves. And oh, that is so good. So good. Alrighty, that's dinner. All right, we just got out of Costco. I spent $97 this week on groceries and clothing. <laughs> I got this shirt. It's a nice soft fleece for $14. Uh, my peanut butter that I get was $7.89. No, that was $9.99. 
The butter is $7.89. That's such a good deal. I should have got two. My sweetener is $8.99. I grabbed some cheese that was $10.69. I get this packet for my coffee. And that was $12.99. The bacon was $13.79 for four pounds. And the big spender today, $16.99 for five pounds of ground beef. I like to buy it frozen in these one pound containers because it's just more convenient for me. So that's everything. All my purchases today. You won't be able to tell, but I did get my garage half cleaned. I moved some things this way that needs to get tossed. I swept the floor. I got my firewood set up. And then up here, the big thing I did was organized all of my kitchen stuff. And I got rid of quite a bit of stuff from that shelf. This will be next, all the tools, paint, old paint needs to be dealt with. I cleaned out the freezer. Next, this is all stuff that needs, hey, needs to be gone through and determine what I'm gonna do with. And I've already, like these two shelves have already been cleaned off. All these totes have been organized. So it's just really the top couple shelves on this one and then taking this top stuff and putting it away so when my kayak comes back. But yeah, I know it looks like a mess still, but it's not too terribly bad. All right, let's get the groceries put away. All right, I did stop at Dollar Tree, got some pans, some other stuff. I'll do a haul. I stopped at Aldi. Um, I got the rice squares for the harvest mix. Uh, another pack of caramels. And some candy corn. Um, cream. I got six creams. And some real vanilla to do um, our pumpkin foam. Pumpkin cream. Alright, let's get this put away now. Alright, everybody. <laughs> We've got the drill out. I'm going to drill a hole in the top of this can. It's just a mason jar. I want to make a deodorizer for my carpet with just plain baking soda, but I need a dispenser. So I'm going to drill some holes in the top of this so I can sprinkle it on the carpet. So let's see what happens here. Okay. It's a little rough. I'm gonna take a hammer and flatten it down so it doesn't cut me, but I have five holes and now I can put baking soda. If I decide to use essential oils, I'll find some that are pet safe. Um, but I wanted a carpet deodorizer and I wanted something more natural. And baking soda is pretty much it. I can also use this jar in the kitty litter. I sometimes put baking soda I say powder, baking soda in the bottom of the pan to absorb any odors that way too. So yeah, I just made it. I have these in my garage and I thought this is perfect and I have some baking soda. So let's get to it. All right, we're gonna end out this video today by making some carpet deodorizer. Now where I drilled the holes, I went through with a hammer so it's not sharp at all. However, I wouldn't recommend running your finger on it. I also banked it on the inside. So the recipes that I have found um, advise using equal parts baking soda and cornstarch and essential oil. Now I did some research and frankincense should be good to, okay to use around cats. Mm, I love it too. Now I'm not telling you to use this on your cat. I don't put oils on my cats. I don't feed oils to my cats. I just want to make sure it's safe around them. This is 100% essential oil. Now, the fun thing is on my jar, I've got measures. So I'm going to make one cup, I think. Maybe two cups. We'll see how much ingredients I have. Funny thing is, I didn't know what I was going to do with all this cornstarch. Well, now I know. So I'm just not really measuring, I would say. I'm just putting the baking soda. Hi, buddy. You can do just baking soda, I feel like. But I would prefer, hi. I would prefer, oh, cornstarch, I think, keeps it dry. Oh, hi. 
Johnny, what you doing? That was him, his, his nails. And those who ask, the cats are doing great. They're over all the dog pets. So there's one cup. Now we're going to do a cup of this. And I just love that I can use up ingredients, you know, that I've had in my house that need to be used. This was in my freezer. So it's not good for, no, this was in the cabinet. It's not good to eat, but it will be good to, uh, you know, absorb some odors and especially like oils and things off of our feet. And I'm choosing to use a knife in this situation. So before I put the um, drops of oil in here, I'm just gonna kinda give us a good stir. Now, if I wanted to like shake it up, I could just put a different lid on it, but I don't want to. I am just going to stir it up. There we go. Of course, I'm getting it all over the counter, but that's okay. Now, the directions say, you know, you just put some drops of oil in. I'm going to start with 15. I have way more than what the recipes I saw called for. I have a lot of carpet in my house, but I don't need it overly scented. And um, I do change my filter frequently on my vacuum. That's another, you know, con concern when you're using a carpet deodorizer. However, um, I also have washable filters on my vacuum. I need some more. All right. And I thought about just using plain vanilla, uh, but I think it would trigger the baking soda. So there we go. I'm just going to keep stirring this for a little bit. It says until there's no clumps. Although I don't really see clumps in here. I am trying to dig from the bottom, make sure that I have all my baking soda mixed up and I'm just going to keep stirring and then I'll sprinkle some on the carpet and show you how it comes out of my can. We're just in the middle of the carpet and look and it just sprinkles out rather nicely. Okay yeah, Alex is sniffing it up and then I'm gonna let it sit here for a minute or so buddy gather. Hey gather. Let it sit for a minute or so, and then I'm going to vacuum it up. And I think that this will help. I also am thinking, Alex, hi, baby. Uh, I think that I'm going to do my mattress before winter. I really am feeling like I need to freshen up my house before um, closing it up for the, you know, for the winter. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and this was helpful. And I will chat with you all later. Bye.